the flying lion says, Boys, hell is real. 2023 Supporter Shield champs. Just give me a reason to drink some Guinness in the morning. Uh, yeah, just a fan of the sport, you know. I appreciate the opportunity. It's definitely tougher to be an academy player than it is a pro. Soccer is my favorite sport now. The jersey swap was my car of the week, trivia question of the week. Welcome back, everyone, to the Flying Lion Lion podcast. We are here tonight on a special Thursday night edition of the Flying Lion, and I think probably first time in our history, Sam. Um, but we have some interesting, interesting to talk about tonight. We did attend the U.S. men's national team unfortunate game against New Zealand. It was another U.S. men's national team in TQL, so that was cool to see. The result was not cool to see. Second part of the episode, we'll get into a little, little bit of the EFC ratings that have come out international break and kind of the fi- final thing that happened with that as well as a preview of the hell is real, real game big game coming up on saturday sam how went tonight yeah doing great uh what what an intro i mean thursdays um yeah i, I think this is the first thursday that we've done i think we're just like fc cincinnati i know earlier this year they finally you know hit every, every single day of the week um maybe we'll end up doing that you know over a course of however many years but yeah i feel like this is the first thursday that we've ever done a podcast on but um yeah it's been a a slow week obviously um international break for everybody on planet earth um which the september window is never i i would say like it's not a very exciting window right everybody plays two games and then just goes back to what they were doing um it's not like it's I don't know. It's not. It doesn't feel special at all. Um, especially for some, Concacaf. If you think about so, it, yeah, especially about for like, Concacaf. I know that we had some like, like high quality games over in Europe. I know you know we had Italy versus France, but um, I mean, it just doesn't. I don't know. September international football. I'd rather much. I mean, you just got into club, right? For Europe, for the top five leagues, MLS. You're in the middle of the season and middle of the playoff race, like. I know we'll touch on a little bit later, but gosh, just not, this is weird, weird. Just airing, airing out your grievances in the, in the first uh, intro for Sam. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, no, I, I totally, I totally agree. Especially like I mentioned with CONCACAF, like, like yes, Mexico, Canada, like they've already, they've already qualified for World Cup um, for 2026. So, but if you look in South America, America did have, have some team or doing like World Cup qualification and we'll turn that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, this game that U.S. men's national team had at TQL, it was the fourth time um, that the U.S. men's national national team had been there. I was gonna have this this as my tribution, but I'll just tell it to you now. So the first the first thing we've seen draw. So it was a one tie against New Zealand. All the other games we had one, one big one. You you know, obviously, of mine is the U.S. Mexico game. So you see Zealand on the schedule for it, and you're like like mm, you know not not as big of a game, but but always cool to see to see you know what play, players show up and re- really sam um at least in the player pool it was mainly you know the a team if you want to call it but the guys that we see in, in this game only not all a team team players uh was shown on the field uh, um but it, it was interesting it was cool to be, to be a part you know we sat in the american outlaws uh, i've been american outlaw for i think over five years now now but just to be a p- part of that and kind of do the to the chance things like that, just to be you know all t- together for that reason. Um, but before the game, we have we have a huge announcement. One Mauricio Pochentino was was named as the U.S. men's men's national manager while we were in Cincinnati. You know, the U.S. was there literally what, what Sam ten minutes before the game game against him. Yeah, I know. I had seen it on somebody else's phone. Um, I think they had received like an email from the U S men's national team. And I like kind of hit you. I was like, they just announced Potch and you're like, no way. And then obviously, you know, we saw the graphic and everything and the video that he sent, um, in, you know, English and in Spanish. Um, I thought that was funny. He did both in different rooms uh, of his house. So, um, that is the one thing also we were we're looking forward to is like oh my gosh if they announce it today maybe you know he'll be in cincinnati like how cool is this you know it, it a, new, a new manager is announced while we're in cincinnati um unfortunately ryan looked at his instagram story and it looked like he was like white water rafting or something so 
Oh, it didn't didn't. He could have been rafting like down the on the Ohio River, Sam. That would have been a possibility. I, yeah, I mean that would have been quite the entrance, right? <laughs> yeah. So for for everyone listening, you know, why does this mess matter? Why does the U.S. men's national team team game? I mean, like we're American, you know, it's it's cool to see your men's national team as a soccer fan play in your city. And yes, it wasn't in Columbus. Hell is real week week. I'm gonna say that. Um, it was in Cincinnati. So the more games we get in Cincinnati the better. And, you know, I don't care. I don't care. The, the attendance in the game, obviously, obviously, was the big point. And for a game against Kansas City, uh, you know, on the Saturday against Can- Canada, again, terrible attendance. But at the same time, people that were there, you know, you know, they showed up. The American Outlaws, especially, especially like, like the Bailey section or the Outlaws section was solid. Um, and, you, you know, that'll be an impression for it. I'll get into it here. Um, for how, how give a AO section at what was the rest of the crowd was I mean it just was not not great for a Tuesday night game you know a friend that didn't mean much but yeah I I would love to see more people people there's definitely reasons why a, and you can on and on and on about it but we got to support national team especially if it's in your back backyard the ticket prices were I think think the big issue and a lot of people will, will shout at that and say you know that's the reason why why um what were your initial thoughts yeah, I mean, initial thoughts, like you said, like it was kind of a sad crowd to see at first, but I know that the throughout the game the Bailey filled out, um, which was nice to see. Unfortunately, the chants were a little dead. Um, the vibes weren't really there um, the whole game, which on and off the field really. Um, but it, it was pretty cool from where we were sitting to be able to see, you know, a U.S. Men's National Team legend like Demarcus Bailey. Um, really? be in the the tnt marcus CBS beasley group. marcus beasley sorry <laughs> beasley um i i even had in my notes it's beasley but you know <laughs> you say bailey and everybody gives you crap but um it was kind of like cool to to see him right there um but yeah i think just the vibe of the, the whole atmosphere i know we were saying hey, at least it wasn't like kansas city right sure yeah good point i mean for that were there you know i i will say that Chance, especially compared to FC Cincinnati games, like it was like no one really knew what the chant chant were. You know, it seemed kind of random. Wish they had like like uh, you know cards that they that they could have, or even even the you know on the peri- periphery of the the outlaw section. You know, you know just to be on out the chance there. There, um, that was kind of my only thing I would say say about it. Um, but other than that, like to this point, like like makeshift team you know is another reason why um but the, but the team didn't look sharp you know first half, first half uh ricardo pepe gets a goal that's called it's called back a week you know foul and they go to the side side left they don't even go to var about it. um but it could have been 1-0 and, and at the point like you give give villain confidence and a belief belief that they play with this team you know and uh I did yeah. find it fun funny that every time that aiden morris is on the ball sam we boot him which which was phenomenal because even though he's not not a crewer, like we forever remember him. Yeah, during as a crewer. during the intros, they were giving him crap every time he touched the ball, giving him crap, and then rightfully so though during the game, he gave the ball away a lot. So it was it wasn't just you know us booing him because he was a former crew player. It was also booing him because he wasn't playing very well. Yeah, him, him and you know if we had to, to really pick up names specifically, Yunus Musa did not not have a good game. Matt Turner some key saves, you know, that saved us us first end of the game and then later on as well. Uh the goal that they, they scored by one one on, you know, Rose and his fault was a deflected one and it goes goes over his head. Uh, um but I mean we but, but we could both probably probably agree since Christian Pulisic coming in like spark sparkly in top team. Yeah, absolutely like he always does. He's Captain America. Um comes in, brings the vibes. Um he, his goal definitely sparked the excitement, right? Like, especially when he came in, like you could feel the energy shift a little bit in the stadium. Um, the offense was moving a little bit better. Uh, we had more of these solid chances up front with him and Balogun and Pepe kind of working together up top. Um, but yeah, just like the last time, you know, he was in Cincinnati, we were there for that game when he scored against Mexico. So it was pretty cool to see him score again. So he's two for two when we're in the building. And and as a sub, you know that was the last yeah. that he scored too. Was as a sub. Uh, um, you know I don't I don't want Christian to be a, a super sub Cincinnati like when he comes. Like he, he's better fit obviously to play a full ninety. But it was cool cool to see him score in that setting. Uh, we really needed him on the pitch honestly for for a full because you could tell they looked to him to create 
and to understand and like what people are doing. I think the biggest thing that me and you took away too was, man, I really need Luciano Costa. You know, you know, if we Lucho out, out there playing with Pulisic, that would be like the coolest thing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I know we were talking about Lucho and Pulisic as dueling tens. Dueling tens. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's. Yeah. I mean, oof. one one watch can out. dream. Watch out. The man, the man gets his green card. Watch out. Yeah. So so I mean, this leads to my next question. And like, should an FCC player been called up for, up for this window? You know, we, we had some honorable shout outs. I would have loved in this game, you know, obviously Miazga is out for the rest of the year, but, but leadership hip, and that's really what's been lacking. And, and the talk around, you know, a lot of the vet veterans who for the U.S. men's national team is there, there's no grit in this team. There's no leadership. There's not one, one person out there that can, can direct them. Christian's a leader and he's the captain, and, but you need an enforcer that can back, back it up. And your guy gets hit, you got to come over and, and you're, you know, talking to him. And, you know, is, is that... Taylor Adams is, is that Weston Lee, but I really have loved to see a Matt Miazga continue his trend with the men's national team and kind of see, see him take the reins for that. That unfortunately it doesn't look he's going that way. Our under back though, Sam Miles Robinson, like should should he gotten a look for this window? No, if we're being if we're being completely honest, <laughs> I I would not have looked anywhere near Miles Robinson. Um, to to be, be frank, his form is not where it needs to be to be a part of the U.S. men's national team. Um, he's a very quality player, plays very well for the U.S. men's national team, but he's just not not in form right now um, considering what him and the other back line uh, players have done for FC Cincinnati in, in a while. Um, but I know if Miazga is healthy, I think it's hard to say, right, um, if you were to – to give him a shout or not. I know from our perspective, obviously he deserves it, but um, is that enough for, you know, an interim coach, right? Or, you know, when Berhalter was the coach, you know, a couple months ago, it's hard to say, but yeah, as far as this window, probably, probably not. Yeah. And I think that's a really good point because especially when, when Berhalter was the manager, like, Miazga did get picked, but last year, last year or I think it was Gold Cup, um, um, you know, Miazga gets that selection, um, and Vasquez Vas gets that selection. You know, we didn't even get to see T Vasquez. I would love to see Vasquez at least get, like, like an opportunity. Um, um, but a lot of these guys that are, like, fringe players, they're trying to find their spot and trying to try and prove to the new manager that's coming in, like, like hey, I deserve a chance. Um, so I, I would have thought that a lot more of these, these guys have been playing inspired Ultimately, you know, it ended up in a 1-1 tie. I have a bit of a big gripe about how the end of the game went, and I'll touch on that here a little bit later. Um, but, Sam, let's let's get into uh, talking about this this new manager, though, and the effect that it could, it could have on the FC Cincinnati players. Yeah, I think, you know, he, he brings a lot of inter international experience. Um, he's known for his development of players um, at, at the highest level. So does that mean that, you know, the quality of players players that we have now is he going to be able to take those and you know take them to the next level or is that just more helping the youth players get to the same level as everybody else to kind of keep keep the quality the same um it'll be interesting to see is he is he the guy you know to to get us over the hump in in 2026 specifically right because that's what he was hired to do is get us into quarterfinals semifinals um of you know 2026 world cup it being our own home soil, um, making a big statement that way. I think from my standpoint, I know we'll talk about it for years to come, you know, because we, we got a whole bunch of content, you know, coming up hopefully for right. the next two years. But I think you sign him for that reason. Yeah, no, I, great shout, especially with, with the player pool right now, um, um, you know, and being more European based, like that's that's where main players are at, you know, and Owen, his style kind of fits, fits with too, but to, to be able to establish a play style, um, um, to establish like leaders within the, in the team, um, and, and just to show like, show like passion for your national team. I think that's what for me, for me was really lacking in this, in this way, especially was you just did not have that passion to, to be a USA play player. And I hope that he can bring that back. Now, what would be interesting, you know, especially if we look at, you know, you know, the wind coming up, Sam, um, you know, you know, if we were to bring in a Josh Sargent, you know, what would that look like? Like, um, under Pochettino, you know, you know, if he was for FCC, like, is Poch, Poch going to be a manager that, like, looking at MLS players, 
you know, you know, it's a big question. Like Mike Berhalter, like, okay, didn't really look at many of the MLS us guys, but I really kind of have to argue you like you have to go with your best players in form. Uh, in the MLS is right though. Over the next couple of years, there's it's gonna maybe be a bigger shift on is he is he gonna start selecting some of these guys and how is that gonna affect affect our FC players? There's, I don't want to keep ranting, but I do want to just just honorably shout Stefan Trilla. So so he just made his U18 men national team debut. Um, um playing against uh, I think it was just Japan actually Sam wasn't it today? Yeah. Uh, um. So and he's gonna be a player coming coming up in the future. Obviously, first team next year. His brothers joined our academy as well. But but uh, yeah, like is, is he he gonna be elected eventually for U20s, U20, U23? Is he gonna get a call, call up to the national team down the, down the road? If he stays on this trajectory, that would be really cool to see. Yeah, I think with Potch, you're hoping that there's no bias, but we all know, like, if there's bias in the commentary and there's bias, you know, with the pundits, then there's going to be bias with the the managers as well. Sure. Um, and that's just how it is until the MLS becomes, in everybody else's eyes, you know, same quality or at least, you know, maybe the, the sixth league, right? If right. you want to talk about, like, top six. Um so I, I'm hoping that it changes. I think, you know, when we talk about more and more about Lucho and where he's at with his green card and everything, like when you're talking about how it impacts FC specifically, like he's the guy that you're going to look at as far as, I mean, he's 30 right now, right? So by the time 2026 rolls around, he'll be 32. So at that point, like how is Lucho's legs, you know, right. it is – is he still playing at the same level, but also like, does he have the green card? Like, did he get it? Um, but yeah, I think as far as other guys that you could possibly shout, I know if Robinson's still with us, you know, there's always the possibility because he has a lot of caps uh, for the U S men's national team. So I don't know. It's, it's tough to, tough to see right now, but I think Shirilla, if he's on his, the path that he's in on right now, I no doubt they need it. I mean, they need a, a goal scorer. So, He's shown yeah. that he can do that. Yeah, I mean, like, like we look down the road, you know, two years, years from now, and at the World Cup, World Cup just finished. You know, at the time, two years, two years, do we have an FC Cincinnati play that played it in the World Cup? Yes or no? Your, your first reaction, yes or no? Do we have an FCC player that gets called in for the World Cup? I'd like to say yes, um, because from here until then, I'd like to think that FC Cincinnati signs somebody. If it's not somebody on the the current roster, yeah, no, I I think so too too. Especially with the high profile guys we were, we were looking at, a lot of these guys, from what I'm hearing, like they're not getting consistent playing time in Europe, and they they want to build their way up for, you know, the World Cup. Up, let's say they're gonna get it with FC Cincinnati. We're gonna pay them. We're gonna we're gonna get that opportunity for them. I just hope that you you know at noon and those guys can continue to have to have a good relationship with the men's national team. You know, managers, general manager, manager, and that Pochettino looks at Lucho especially and says, "I'm Argentinian. You're Argentinian originally. You know, let's let's make make this. Yeah, let's make this happen. So that would be really really cool tool to see. Um, obviously, yet yet to be seen that will happen. But just wanted to briefly recap you know, our thoughts on the U.S. men's national team. I'm obviously coming into QL and all that. You know, that brought to kind of kind of the sea land." Um, at a weird, weird time too, you know, right before hell is real. Uh, um, so a lot of weird things going on, but second of the episode, we'll get into more of the specific SEC things. Before we do go to break though, Sam, Sam give me a trivia question of the week. Yeah, I was, was surfing, you know, Twitter this week um, and thought it was interesting and thought we'd give it a shout. But um, my trivia of the week for you, Ryan, is, who has the most assists in men's international football history? And most most assists in for your single country. Yeah. Anyone in the world. world. Anyone in the world. Go with Luka Modric is my is my person that I'm gonna guess. Okay, for Croatia. Croatia. The solid guess. Um. I don't know. We'll see if he's right on the other side. Hey, everyone. We have some exciting news. We are thrilled to announce a partnership with BetStamp and Sign Up Expert, opening up an incredible opportunity for you to join some of our favorite sports books to get the best odds and new user offers. Head over to our dedicated page at signupexpert.com 
slash flying lions to explore a selection of sports books tailored to your region, each with unique offerings. If you're ready to take your sports betting to the next level and show some love for our brand, we highly recommend signing up for your next sports book through our sign up expert link. Once again, visit signupexpert.com forward slash flying lions to place your bets today. Enjoy. We are back for this episode. Chat out all things U.S. Men's National Team in Cincinnati. Second part of the episode, mode more SC Cincinnati specific thing. We're going to roll into our cards of the week. Week Sam is a very interesting one for us. It, I mean, it's only interesting because you you don't like you don't like it. You know, it's a it's a very soft card to you, if not you know no card at all. But it's it's it was a it was a slow week. All right, so it was a slow week. But my card of the week is um, the EAFC MLS ratings page error. Um, the EAFC released the rankings on September 9th, um, and they're making us wait until the podcast is available now, which is September 13th, um, for the rest of the rankings. I just think that sucks, um, especially having an error on your site is just not a good look, in my, my opinion. Um I've edited a bunch of websites, so I, I know what I'm talking about. Um, but at least hide the page, right? Like, don't make the page clickable for people, especially if you're telling us, oh, they're going to come out the next day. They tease us the day before with releasing some of the cards on Twitter, showing speed, overalls, all this, just to release it on, you know, the next day. Like, just then release it on the same day. If you're going to tease us on Twitter, just release it the same day. Or, or like make it accessible for the guys that you've already shown us online. Like that is also true as well. Yeah, I'm like you're you're already leading. You know, oh, you know, Messi's this, knows this, Alvis Powell's this, and then go oh, and you look it up and it's an air page. Like I get that's frustrating. We're trying to prepare for a podcast episode, people. People. Um, yeah, seriously, but, we're trying to get content and it's just <laughs> error. Yeah, no, no, good shout. I, I am excited about the game and seeing, you know, what they uh, end up coming out with uh, our player ranking rankings. Talk about that here in a minute, though. I'm going to get to my card, and I'm going to go on a quick rant here, and then we can go back to the EAFC thing. But my card of the week, um, it's going to be a red card, Sam. Um, the American players after the game, you know, we did tie one-to-one. We were upset about, about the result. You know, we did tie one I think all but, but two of the American players – Went to you know, you know show love fans that came. I think it was Pulisic and Aiden Morris. Morris were the only ones that walked around and did a little clap to the Bailey. Everyone else stood at midfield, didn't acknowledge the fans, didn't come over the stands at all and take photos with the kids, exchange jerseys. We are so lucky as a FC Cincinnati fan base to have amazing you know players after the game, no matter no matter what the road is. To come over and thank the fans, and you can really tell this this team has lost their focus, their passion, their knowing of what it means to be an American player. Like you are playing for your national team. Go thank your fans for showing up. I don't care if the attendance wasn't what you thought it would be, or to your to your thing. Like we're out here, we're supporting you. Come over and thank the fans. Fans, how do you build a better team for the future or or interest for the World Cup? You go and you take photos with little kid, kid. You know, I have a daughter. Hopefully, hopefully that'll be interested in soccer. And if none of the none of the you know play come over, she's not going to know none of them are. And oh, you know, you know, part of this guy, he he came over and we you know you know took a photo with him. With him. All these guys guys just stay in the middle and don't even acknowledge knowledge anyone. It's ridiculous. I just don't don't understand. I've never I've never seen like why are we doing this as a national team? Yeah, I I thought that was. Very interesting because you know we had walked closer down to the Bailey to you know, possibly clap them up, you know, show our support because um, it it was just a tough result, right? Obviously, nobody wants to give up a goal in the 89th minute, um, but yeah, to not show your support for the fans um, that you know showed up for you against a team that you know isn't really anything um, on a Tuesday night, right in Cincinnati. Um, I mean, it was, yeah, I can't really put it into words too. Like it, it's just, it's unfortunate. And it goes back to what you were saying at the beginning of the podcast, which there's no leadership. There's no like vocal voice. Um, if Pulisic is going to be that, you know, captain, um, 
which I know Chris Richards was actually uh, captain, for, captain for this game. And he didn't, you know, you got to be vocal and say, guys, like, this isn't right. Like, I, I don't care. Like, yell at them. Yell at your teammates right then, right there to go clap up the fans. Right? Because they're just all kind of just hanging around the center circle, just looking at each other. Like, they did a little clap, but it was kind of like, you know, excuse my language, but half-assed. Um, yeah, I, I just didn't appreciate it as well. Yeah. And, I mean, what, a day before 9-11, too? Oh, jeez. Yeah. You know? I mean, I mean, like. No, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's yeah. It's just. I, I just don't understand it. You know, I've never pride. seen it from, from a national. It, it's pride. I mean, like, yeah. look at the, the 94 team that played in the World Cup and all the pride and all the trust that, that that team to soccer in America. And to the neutral fan that comes to this game or, or a young that's just starting to get into soccer and starting starting to follow, you know, Christian Pulisic. Okay, he came over, but... but Crenshaw's our captain and, and doesn't come over to the fans, doesn't, you know, you know, thank him, doesn't do, do a lap around, you know. That, that starts from the top. That starts from your your captain. That's from your coach. I don't care if it's an interim interim coach. Like he's American. You no, know, he should know better. He's been a part of the part of the U.S. as well. Um, there there's got to be accountability. I know Charlie Davies talked about it on it on their podcast. Um, as well, call it what what you want is of it, and really said the same thing was Christian was was the only one walked over. Um, and, and thanked on like again. I don't care care what the result is. There's no, no, you know, exception for that. Uh, you are doing that. You got to come over. You got to thank your your fans, no matter what. what. And that's what what builds pride for your country and for your your national team and interest and all of it. Um, sorry, I'll I'll, I'll get my rant now. Yeah, soapbox done. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that uh, uh, moving on. But as we got back to the EAFC thing and the ratings, at least for some of the players, did come out. Go yeah, back to yeah. that now. I was happy with that. We we touch on the fact that Alvis Powell, friend of the, friend of the pod, was tied for first in MLS for at ninety two. So shout out Alvis. Um, we all knew you were quick, but but didn't know you were that fast, man. Like props to you, you. That's great. Yeah, I mean being up there, he's a center back slash right back slash right wing back. Like he does it all um, on the back line there, and so for a guy to do the, all that right and have the, a big of a body as he actually does 92 speed is pretty pretty impressive still um and he's got the same overall as last year i know um in years prior he was like i want to say 65s around there um he's a 66 again this year so um he's consistent i don't you know not bad do, should we do, do we uh I was gonna say, do do we shout out Alice Pow for the Jamaican track team for the 100 meter dash? I mean, I mean, I'm sure he's he got looks, right? <laughs> I mean, how do you not like get time for the quickest player have... in the MLS? Right? Yeah, I mean, you have NFL guys that are like Tyreek Hill, right? That's talking about like his track days and, you know, the U S team and why not, why not have Alvis, you know, soccer players? I mean, cleats, track cleats and soccer cleats. Right. I mean, it's, it's decently yeah. close, right. You know, I, so my only issue is Alvis is really good at the zigzag run. run. He's not so good on good on the sprint. Well, but that's on the ball, you know? So, so the exception he, he gets the hundred meter dash is that he gets to run with the, with the ball. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because we both know, like, Alvis with the ball going in a straight line, he might go straight to the end line, but gosh darn it, like, he's going to get there first, you know? Like, true. Untouchable. Yeah. Besides uh, Alvis, though, we did did get to see that Lucho is 81 over, overall. So I think that puts him at fifth, I believe, overall ranking for all MLS players. He's second in dribbling behind a certain inner Miami player. Player, um, but yeah, I, I think Lucho boosted his ratings actually, actually by a cut, which he yeah. deserved um, yeah. from his, his MVP season. So I love to see that. Miles Robinson was only at a set of seventy-two from what I saw. So I, I, I felt like that was a little bit low. Um, I feel I feel I like needed a little bit higher there. I'm not sure what Miazga was that hadn't come out yet, but again, stay tuned. We'll find out. You know, today, today if we're listening. Um, um, what does our team look like, like on this video game? You know, it means a ton to a lot of, a lot of people out there. Hey, um, I no, mean, that's, no, I did, but 
that's how we scout players though that's true it's like well all right bringing this player in player in what's his rating on fifa yeah yeah it means everything i mean that fifa knows all i mean at this point it's eaf's ea but you know like true true doesn't that same roll the tongue yeah fifa 2k apparently that's a thing now i don't like that no i don't like it either we're going to go go back to the international break, Sam. We did to just touch on some of the FCC guys that did have appearances for a couple of, couple of national teams. Uh, one former player as well. So first, first off, FC Cincinnati player, Teenage, teenage Hedebe, subbed in, in for Bob Way in, in their 0-0 draw. He got like one, one minute, Sam. The dude had to, had to like go thousands of mi- miles africa to this game um, um i believe he was in you got for the game um got subbed in played one minute so at, le- at least fresh you know if he is, he is coming and he's able to play in the saturday game um what are your thoughts on that it's cool to see see at least the play got some minutes minute cool to see see at least the yeah i yeah i guess you know it's it's one of those things that i know with brandon vasquez and miazga there for a while and miles robinson like What's the point? Like, if if you're gonna do that to them, where they just go in and play one minute, like, what's what's the point where we could? He's a new, you know, he's a newer signing, right? For us, he could get acquainted with the team and be able to like help us in the MLS. And I don't know, it, that was interesting. But did did um, did they have two clean sheets? Yeah, yeah. I I mean, he didn't play in the first already, game, but. He's, I mean, he's already shown that he can keep a clean sheet. So well, I'm already, you know, signs yeah. are good. Even if it's a one minute, like he's influencing the game. Well versed in these Bob Way national. Um, but Fop Mob is, is an easy way to go and uh, find out the scores. I'm not shouting at them out, out as answer there with that plug. But um, um, the other we had former SC Cincinnati Penny player, Yer Mascara, scored for Colombia against Argentina. They won one two one in a World Cup qualifier. The Yerson or or our son's first first goal for Colombia. The dude was in an absolute years after he scored. And by the way, it was just just an unbelievable header. Yeah, yeah. I mean, once again, I think this is his year, right? This is his kind of year to to showcase all the top five leagues. Um, everybody, you know, on the national team for Colombia, that he is a he's going to be a main stay right um and he's gonna only go go up from here um obviously he's got his antics that we talked about earlier in the season but um yeah what a header for Colombia and Martina is not so happy about that loss to, to Colombia on the Argentinian side um smacking the camera that was that was a big thing for me as well yeah good shout with that but but I mean to see like you, you know you're someone to the squad and contribute you know, you know, everyone in this big, big stink, and I say it because it's how it was real weak, but this big, big stink about, oh, you know, Cucho Cho Hernandez is finally back in the Colombian na- national team pair. Didn't even make the 18. Um, so, Yer- Yerson, who played for SCC, while he was playing for SCC for Colombia, Santi Arias played for Colombia. So, yeah. all, all these punts that want to say, oh, you know, Cucho broke into this big team. It's like we had we had two guys here that were actively playing for FC Cincinnati. Who made it to the Columbia national team team in our and played to the Columbia yeah. national team. and played yeah. So I don't want to hear it. And yeah, yeah. To your point though about years, years and like this is a breakout year. He's 23. He's doing pretty decent from what I'm hearing, seeing actually um, in some of the games uh, with Wolves. He's got he's got some of his antics. You know, again we had touched touched on that in the season, but um, I, I would love love the where he goes over the next several years um but i think he always has a special place in his heart or fc we vaulted his career he was you know obviously this just this high talented player uh, but he really found his footing with us and, and i just one day he'll be able to come back at least to like like watch a game hold the pull the third do something um and I, I'm, sure, I'm sure he will yeah absolutely it's some sometime probably in a june or a july or something like that i think that'd be fun a uh, market for I was gonna say something ridiculous like a, a statue or like Hall of Fame for a player that that one year on loan with FCC, but there's there's no way. 
I mean, but just just into the pedigree and like what this guy could could be for his national team for the Premier Premier League, like he's got a real big opportunity to be an unbelievable player and have a great great career with a young years already too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I completely agree. Um, moving on. I just wish I had him for this uh, next game. Oh, geez. Yes. Yes. Can you imagine? Just one game, right? Can we loan him? Can we loan him back? Yeah. How was real? Real? It's back. We're here. It's happening. By the time everyone's listening, it's tomorrow. You know, we're ready. Um, it's kind of sad that there's not, not like a big lead up to this with the international break break and like, oh, we're back in the MLS, you know, and we just had this break. We haven't really heard much of the team. Really, FC Cincinnati since he did not even um, look into, you know, you know, going against these yellow cards that that Murphy and my Miles Robinson had. They didn't didn't like um, contended it, which oh, uh, uh, said. I said that's great. Yeah, that's good. News I, I wish they would have yeah. at least at least like put in something to try to get my, get my um, yeah. off of card accumulation. But they're just trying not to be in the league, the league's uh, book too much, much, um, so we don't get get bad calls against us for the rest of the year. Um, but but yeah, it'll be a really really good good game. Obviously, Columbus is a, a good run, good run of form. They do have a couple of guys that are coming off interna- international break, so their ability will be probably just as equal with ours. But um, um, Sam, before we get in, before we get in a lot more of the specifics, I have to know because you because you put this out on X or Twitter. What was your best hell is real Tifofo that you've seen? Yeah, I think we had talked about it beforehand. Um, but best hell is real Tifo. For me, is the the Gary is the samurai, um, just the ambiance of that Tifo is just it's awesome. Um, that goal or that that game too, unfortunately, two two draw in 2021 is when that Tifo um, was created uh, against Columbus at home. Um, Columbus even had a red card that game, and they came back and scored two goals. But it was the Edgar Castillo gate or uh, Castillo goal one minute. Um, into the game so yeah i think the gary as the samurai is is my pick yeah yeah no i would go the same just i mean it was the biggest tifo um the, the engine it had you know having gary up right and yeah. i think the the it vanquished the, the demon you know on the part that went over the daily from all that i'm hearing this tifo is about to be epic for sure sad and it comes at a really good moment. Good moment. This, this is kind of the make or break break of like end part of the season, in my opinion. Opinion. Like every rivalry game is going to be a huge make or break break. But in the setting of, of like where we're at in the supporter shield, where we're at, where we're at into like momentum and carrying it into the the playoffs, like it would be huge for us, especially going two straight road games after this, um, to get a result here and without you know to you know two of our sex. Do you? Uh... You have any insight? You got you got something to share? You got do you know uh know any news about the Tifo? Huh? I'm not not spitting anything about it. Yeah. But from all I'm hearing, it's, it's okay. Pretty- okay. Let's say you don't know anything about it. All right. Okay. What would you want it to be? If I was just wondering or pondering, um, got to be dimension again. Like I like I would love the rigging go go up and then something over the over the Bailey as well. Um. The smoke included, like with the TFO as it goes up, like like the one that we had against Red Bulls in the playoffs was the best I've ever ever seen. Any I mean, MLS our stuff. our pyrotechnic budget is pretty off the chart. It's nowadays, true. So and didn't use any of of the fireworks or smoke for this men's national team game. So oh, that's something in their bag, and I'm just re- yeah. ready for it. So it, it's gonna be epic. Um, I mean, the build up to the game is always so good. The crowd's gonna be just just a complete 180 from what it was on Tuesday. Tuesday. Like it was hard sitting in TQL, being like, man, man, on Saturday it's gonna be completely different in here. Um, and you know, talking passion to complete passion, like have all the U.S. men's and national team guys sit there and watch it and show them what it means to have have passion. That that is that right there. And you know what? But two of the guys are from their home like cities playing in this game too. So they've they've learned to like hate each other. Uh, and I love it. Love it. Yeah, I yeah, I think just overall, I think the vibes are going to be like you said a lot different. Um, but going into this game, I know for us, um, just to dive into it, we've got these lineup issues, right? So you had just mentioned, you know, we're going to be missing an Ian Murphy. We're going to be missing 
Miles Robinson due to yellow card accumulation. What does the lineup look for you? Like, how does that look? Yeah, I, I, so I have Antano in goal. I have Orshano on the left. left. Um, I, I think you will probably see Awazium as your central point. Um, likely, in my opinion, you're probably going to gonna get Power Yedlin in the middle. Um, and, and then, I mean, a variation of, the, of those guys. The question will be if Teenage Today Bebe can play. I don't, I don't, he starts, but he's going to at least play maybe a, a half just because he has MLS experience. It'd be very interesting to just throw him into the fire, you know, in the game and not have played or really, really what maybe possibly one press with his other teammates. So, do you just throw that guy in the net thing? Probably not. Not you probably go with guys that have been around at least. It's going to be a makeshift back line. Um, um but on the right, you know, I, I, I will either have one of you know, Pow Pow or yeah, the middle in the midfield. You're 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 gonna Buka, you're gonna have Obi. You're gonna gonna have Luch back, in my opinion. Um, I think think from all I was hearing is, you know, he's feeling a lot better mentally, phys- physically. He's ready for this game, and there's no way that he's not playing a full ninety. Um, Luch is gonna be in there, and then I think uh, what worked worked well in the strikers for me from games previous, Kelsey, you know, really good game, and then uh, probably probably Jakini because that's the best guy that we have as well. Kuo as a super sub is. Most likely, likely what you see, just because of how thin, thin were some positions, um, and, and just that he can come in off the bench. And in this game, we're gonna we're gonna possibly get um, some fire, you know. So I, I think that is a, is a really good for him. What what about you? Yeah, I think for the most part, um, I think questions for me in the back. Obviously, I think you know you have Celentano or Shano, um, I, Cheeto in the middle for me. Um, as far as center back, like. Does Keller get a shout over, you know, a Yedlin playing center back? I'd rather yeah. see Powell playing center back than Yedlin, because um, I, I think we need him out wide. Um, but then the other question is, is you know, we see Assad in training. How is he going to be involved in this game, right? So is he going to be ready um, to be able to to at least contribute um, to a similar of like what Lucho was doing, right? Can, like, can he play a half? Um, so I'll, I'll look to see, you know, if they do put Yedlin at center back, maybe Assad starts on the right side and maybe he's ready. Um, but then as far as in the middle up top, obviously Buka, Obi, like they're there. Um, I fully expect, especially based off the reports that came out today, um, Acosta will start. Um, but then up top, it's interesting do you go with uh, a Lucho Kubo dueling tens with Kelsey up top or last game um, you had Kubo as your number 10 and you had Nico and Kelsey. So like you said, do you take Kubo out and, you know, use him as a super sub? I think you can't go wrong with, with either one of those. Um, it just depends on, do you want to be more attacking or do you want to have more involvement um, in the midfield? Because I know we had talked about, especially against Columbus, being able to control the midfield, right? So maybe having the dueling tens of Kubo and Lucho will be able to help control that midfield a little bit better. I like that shout um, in the fact that, you know, Kubo's been around, he's seen the three game, and there's there's a lot more familiarity with, with Lucho and Kubo than there is with, with Nico uh, Lucho at this mm-hmm. point. Yeah. You know, hope down the road and we'll stretch of the season, you know, we get that. But, but for right now, the, the, the issue had been, you know, getting off to a terrible start. And if you want to put your best foot forward to start the, the game, like, I actually do. I'm coming more around to the idea of Kubo, you know, getting the start in this game. So great, great, great check for that. Um, last time that we played Columbus, we beat them. Two to one in Columbus. So, so it might be a little bit of a narrative, you know, you know, from, say, of, you know, hey, this team just, just beat you. I think we were the last team to beat them at home, actually, too, um, which is kind of kind of crazy to think about. So, yeah, I don't know if there's that narrative or not, or, or if they may think there's always something that they like shout out at and say and like make it a thing. Um, we, again, always, um, we, we never have a full, full ride when we play them. Like I said, the last time, time like it's never going to be just, just our best guys. So, so next man up, you know, is the mentality. And, and, you know, what was missing for the U.S. men's national team, team was passion. Can Pat ignore the fact that like, can you rally, rally behind your you know, can you rally around the, the fact that Luke's back for a full 90? Um, 
I, I hope they're here and ready because I think the fans are going to bring it. It's going to be an atmosphere. It's going to be a good game. Uh, the Hidebe thing I wanted to touch on real quick. Quake, he is trolling back. Um, you know, yesterday, Thursday, so today, today, by the time you're listening, he did have a 20, 20 hour flight back from Uganda, according to, to Carter Chappie. So I don't know. I, what's your opinion on him getting some minutes? I don't know. Man, I, I think to your point, I don't think he plays a full 90. I don't think it's fair to ask him to do that or be able to pass up your other op- options who have been in training together working on you know, formations or something leading up to this week. Um, I'm sure Pat's one of those guys that during training this week, it was, hey, let's practice with the pieces that we have, right? And then if we're able to add them in, then we'll add them in, right? But let's let's practice with the pieces that we have um, type mentality. And I, I think we, we could possibly see him second half um, if we if we need you know, an extra body or say we go up like one Oh or two one or, you know, by one goal or something. And we need kind of that bigger body to be able to clear stuff out. I think you could see a shout for him. What a first game for him to join. I know. Team. Right. You know, what a better time for him to be introduced to, to the fan base and be like, welcome, welcome to Cincinnati. This is, this is what rivalries look like. You know, I was surprised. Guys, so uh, Pat Noonan, when um, um, a while got signed and was finally eligible to play, like, he started him, and uh, Awazian said, "I said I'm good." To, and he played him, I think, what like 80, 90 minutes at League's Cup games. Him, um, we were impressed by his debut. I mean, he played well. You know that goes against against what Pat had been doing with prior new new players. Um, so as long as teenage teenage today's fit, like, does he say you're the best best option to have in terms of like physicality, skill? Like him and Awaz, Awaz might just have to figure it out. Um, um, personally, like. I don't, I don't know if the familiarity is there, and I'm worried about an early, early mistake and quick goals, like because they can put you under, and they love to have the highest. They love to have possession. Um, when you just get put into that that pet line, that's tough to to deal with. Um, so it's gonna be interesting. Um, I, I'm always gonna gonna shout my prediction being a win against Columbus, but it's gonna be a two one win for me. Two one win. Um... Man, it's uh, I'm I'm like I want to root for Roman to get a clean sheet. Like I I do. Like I want it so bad for him. I do. Like I want it so bad for him. One one. I think it'll be one one draw at home. Honestly, so if we look at playoff playoffs, Sam, if we win high against Columbus, that is automatically getting us in for the playoffs. Uh, if if I believe it's like New New York, Toronto, there's like five teams. If if you do not get a result, either either of those teams, you know, don't get a result, we're in playoffs as well. So it just depends on seeding. Um, it sounds like all all things will be, we're gonna gonna probably clinch no matter the result. I just want to come out of this game and knowing like we clinched because we did it and we got a positive result out of it. Um, um, and I hope the narrative of again they shouldn't have to be told to get hyped up for this game. Game to get be, no no you know this is the biggest game on your schedule at home. Um, so I'm re- really excited for it. Um, any final, final thoughts about the hell is real game? No, I'm just, I'm super stoked. I'm excited. Um, ready for the energy to be back in, in TQL, um, after this stupid international break. Um, you think the uh, field conditions are going to be, be up to par? So I, w- I was going to mention that at the beginning of the podcast, but I figured we'd touch up here later. Um, you know, we were sitting there close to the field in the Bailey um just seeing the field be torn to shreds and i mean what that's a lot of divots four days right four days that you get to to kind of recoup um i hope i hope so i hope so too i mean it did look better but but having games in one week uh and without without you know real much rain and at all like like for the past several weeks um so hopefully hopefully the guns crew has got it going you know, recently it hasn't looked great. Great, I want that to be a reason why like things are off or like they, they can complain this or that. You know what I mean? Like that we don't need need that out out there. You know, and everyone to say look how crap that field looks. Like we just just had a U F game, but still like it's annoying. Um, Miguel, give me your trivia question to answer. Yeah. So once again, to reiterate, 
uh, trivia of the week was who has the most assists in men's international football history. Uh, Ryan had said that it was Luka Modric. Um, unfortunately, Luka's not even in the top five, nor is he even top ten, I think. Um, but Thanks, number one is actually uh, Neymar. Neymar oh, Jr. Wow. Um, is number one. But the reason I brought up the stat is because the guy who is number two is actually Landon Donovan. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, in the world. Yeah, Landon Donovan and Messi are tied for second. That's impressive for, yeah, yeah for on your country. And, I mean, if you look at Landon and how young he started national team, like, it makes a lot of sense. And I think leads the U.S. in goals, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, Dempsey does, I think. Does, does he? Okay, well. They might be, yeah, they might be tied, but Pulisic I think Dempsey against, might have more. Pulisic in this last game again against New Zealand made the top five uh, for U.S. national team for goals. I also do want to bring it up because the reason I, I said this was because I was surfing Twitter and saw the graphic and it said most assists, you know, in international football for your your country, Neymar, right? But it had Messi second and like hmm. Ronaldo was somewhere on the list. Kevin De Bruyne was on the list and it just like didn't list Landon Donovan. And I was like, interesting. You know, they're going to shout out all these guys, but right. actually, like, we're talking about the 21st century. Like, he's in with <laughs> these guys, right? So I That's just crazy to mention his name with you know, the likes of Messi and Ronaldo and, and all of those guys. So that that's fascinating. I, I love that, that question, that answer there. Um, I'm glad that we're done. We're done national break, though. So I put a, let's put into that. Um, and let's get a win this, this week. That was real. We'll see you guys next week and uh, hopefully chatting about a win. Mm-hmm.